All right, so I'm just testing the circuit here um, before I plug this into anything on the C64. Uh, I have the MIDI uh, connector here. I have uh, my Arduino Nano and I have a multiplexer and I have three uh, pots. Technically, I don't quite need the uh, multiplexer because there's only three pots, you know, the, the Arduino Nano can handle that. But we'll have, I think, uh, how many is there? Eight, nine, 10, 12, we'll have 12. So. Uh, we need the middle multiplexer then in that case. So anyway, if I uh, twist the knobs, I have a, a MIDI kind of monitor here. So nothing is happening. Uh, that just yellow um, active sentencing is coming from this guy. And I'm guessing the uh, beam um, thing, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's coming from my keyboard. Um, so if I twist the knob here, there you go. We get some activity. Uh, I'm seeing, we should see just probably, I think, uh, oh, 05 portamento time on this one, uh, because that's what the uh, the code is set to. But we're seeing st other stuff creep in, uh, yeah, it's in the first one. And I suspect it's because uh, I only have three pins connected and I haven't tied the other ones to ground, for example. So they're floating and they're just, uh, it's it's some... Uh, uh, parasit parasitic uh, sort of a uh, signal is coming out of there. Anyway, I haven't received a carrot yet, but as soon as I receive the MIDI carrot for the C64, we'll test all this on the actual carrot. All right, so I powered this uh, little guy. It's not much to it, but um, this is the uh, result I get. I can actually see the um, C64 display. It just keeps flashing. I think there's a problem with However, this guy is implementing sync, maybe, um, for a, a composite. And uh, I was going to order stuff on uh, AliExpress, and I might still do that because um, I do like the format. Uh, and I think I found one that might be suitable or have a better sync implementation or composite implementation. But then, so I've actually placed the order. But then I remember I have... This guy, this little guy in my attic, let me plug this in. And I mean, yeah. So this is option two. Option two is, uh, well, using this little uh, CRT that I have. I've had that, I've had a couple of these in my attic for a while, uh, finding for a perfect uh, build for it. And I think this is gonna be perfect. The cart itself, the software is, I mean, this technically colors on it, but you don't need colors. You, technically, you don't need the screen either for it. It's just a uh, little indulgence uh, that uh, I want to have a screen. So I'm gonna use this. Um, I have the template here. It should fit. I might need to make this box a bit longer so the CRT can fit in this way. Uh, this is uh, here for the C64, so it's something like that. And uh, But yeah, I do like the idea of having a CRT in there. Uh, I need to strip all that, uh, the box, and just uh, have just the, uh, the, the, the the tube and the motherboard in there. But I do like the idea of having uh, just a CRT. And the cool thing about it is this is composite, but because of the size, it's actually quite crisp. And because now it's black and white, or it's monochrome, it's not gonna matter very much. So it's just a sort of UI interface that I don't really need because I'll have all the knobs. So the cart is still, well, in transit. I'm assuming uh, any, anything, it's coming from the UK and anything coming from the UK at the moment uh, for, for a reason that, you know, are obvious. It is a bit of a nightmare, it's just taking forever, these custom charges and it's just, uh, yeah, it's a hassle. It's an unnecessary hassle, but such is the way. Um, but it's to the point I've stopped ordering anything from the UK, except that I had no choice. That's the only place it was manufactured. So uh, as soon as that arrives, we'll be able to test this little rake. Or I've ordered a PCB now for this. So if if the PCB arrives, we'll start putting it together. I have the parts here and uh, and we'll test it on the computer uh, check that all the uh, CV um, uh, CC sorry uh, uh, signals are being sent and then once the cart arrives we can uh, start making some sounds but I'm actually excited now but this uh, this option all right this is inside this uh, little unit uh, we got the uh, aerial here I've actually disconnected the uh, the 12 volt to the battery uh, but it still powers to uh, through here. Um, 
I forgot there's a speaker here. We might be able to use this as a just makeshift speaker, or should I even bother? I mean, technically, this is not meant to be doing sound on its own, so to speak. Um, and it's not going to be good quality. I might take this out altogether and just have the audio come out of the um, of the uh, uh, disconnector here straight into a jack uh, out. So uh, there's the uh, tuner here. We can probably get rid of that as well. Uh, I see a connector here and another wire here going to actually the RF uh, tuner, the uh, modulator, because we're just using the uh, audio out. So all we're left with is this guy and this guy. Um, I don't think they have a bleeding resistor, a resistor to charge, and I don't have my discharge tool right now, but it's just a matter of uh, poking a, a screwdriver, grounded screwdriver, and uh, and discharging this guy. Technically, I don't need to do this because I'm not removing the anode cup, but just to um, handle things might make uh, things a bit more safe. This still takes a charge. You want to account for maybe what a one kilovolt per inches across, so this is probably uh, whatever five. Okay, uh, volts in there that you'll get a jolt off. You know, it's it's actually a lot less than a zapper, a taser. Sorry, but you still you still feel uh, every uh, every little bit of it. All right, so I'm uh, working on a case for this guy. So right now I got pretty much almost everything. I'm sort of waiting for the PCB panel. So here we'll have our PCB panel, maybe another piece of wood here on top just to cover everything. And then I'll have to think of a way to cover that PCB as well. So maybe with another more aesthetically pleasing PCB cover, um, like uh, Luke Mom, the computer does for his um, for his uh, his uh, pieces. But it's kind of a standard thing to do. So I might do that. But first, I want to check that it works and it's fine. I'm still waiting for the cart. Still waiting for that PCB. It should be here next week at least. The cart? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I've uh, uh, cut out here for plugging in the uh, power to the uh, Commodore 64 and the power switch. Although I would probably have a switch here that controls, uh, well, I need a second switch here anyway to control the secondary power supply because I need 5 volt and 12 volt as well. What do I need 12 volt for? Or the monitor, the LC, the um, CRT monitor works with a 12 volt uh, supply, so I need that. I'll probably use a small switcher, um, arcade switcher for that. Uh, that should cover the amperage, and the 5 volt will be used for the uh, Arduino PCB. And I think I think that covers me power supply wise. Uh, that's all I'm going to put in it. Uh, I know a Dr. Mix has done his version of it, and uh, he's actually taken off the case and all that, which I'd like to keep that aesthetics. It does look like. It does look like sort of a retro computer. I almost forgot as well, uh, for all this, I'm going to obviously patch it and uh, cover it with a beautiful, beautiful wood grain um, everywhere I can, at least in the wood, to channel my inner LGR. But right now I'm still waiting for that cart and the PCB, hopefully next week. Wonderful weather altogether, but they're here. Uh, the PCBs uh, for the controller, I finally received them and um, I heard the uh, synth card is on the way so I should have it in a couple of days but let me flip the camera and show you what these are all about. So these guys here, um, so what this is, um, well I showed you already so I have room for the pots, uh, these are those t the small uh, little pots, um, no, some of them have just uh, uh, holes uh, as um, you know, just to secure them so they don't move. Uh, I counted the pots I have. I have some of them, but I don't have enough. So I'm going to have to cheat my way here. Uh, there's a couple of issues. I don't have any of these uh, MIDI connectors, and I don't know why I put these uh, in here. But what I can do, um, and what I've done, uh, these holes for is they actually connect to the right pin. So I actually I can drill a hole, put the right connector, and just uh, have little patch wires going out here. Uh, the... Uh, the meat of it is here, so this is our Arduino uh, little power supply thing, control, um, whatever. Uh, but if I don't want to use that, I can just uh, solder just a 5 volt here and feed that directly into my, in my, uh, in my circuit. That's probably what I'll do. This was more of a security than anything. Uh, now that I think of it, a, a 7805 might not be much of a security <laughs> for voltage. Uh, the Arduino multiplexer area, all our MIDI uh, opto uh, stuff here. 
and the pots are soldered here on the other side. And I have a room here for a little screen, uh, I'll show you what I mean afterwards. Um, I'm still waiting for the proper screen from AliExpress, but that's not going to be too much of a worry now that um, I, I'm going to use um, a, a CRT, an actual CRT. And looking at it, I'm actually wondering whether everything's going to fit in there. I might have to do some uh, hackery after all that. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. What I'll do is I'll make a, a first a test one and then I'll make the uh, real thing for the uh, for the unit. So let me just uh, get the soldering iron and uh, place some stuff, program the Arduino, all that kind of stuff and uh, we'll be able to test uh, whether this thing is getting CC and sending CC and MIDI signals and all that kind of stuff. All right, so oh, I am getting so excited already. Um, so <laughs> I have a few parts here. I ran out, like I said, of uh, these small parts, and obviously I don't have uh, the same knob really more than a few times. But um, so I use these guys, and uh, yeah, that works. Doesn't doesn't matter what it looks like for now. So I have my. Uh, uh, this keyboard here, the Keystep Pro, I uh, plugged in the MIDI in. I have the MIDI out going into my uh, my computer here. And this is my uh, MIDI test. So if I move the knob, there you go. It's all working. Ha ha ha. Joy, 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 joy. So yeah, next step is to actually just finish the box and put this here. I'm gonna have to do some hacking, uh, clever hacking. Maybe I'll have to cut this out. Essentially, uh, I don't have enough room from here to here for the uh, the little monitor. And if I want to use those parts, I have enough of these for one full interface. Um, the spacing on this doesn't allow for these parts to be used. That's my own silliness. So I'm going to keep this maybe as a test, um, as a test um, rig. Uh, although I don't know when I'll need them, but you never know. Uh, once I get the monitor here, I might make like a box, a little box I can put in front of a, another C64. Who knows? We'll see. And then, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then figure out a way to maybe find a new placement for all these parts and find a way to reconnect them. I'm going to have to do some hacking, maybe just cut like straight here or something like that and then patch those. Uh, these are all lines, like all the logic going between the multiplexer and the MIDI is actually contained here. Yeah, um, but uh, these are the lines going to each of the parts and the plus five and ground as well. I am yeah, going to have to do a little bit of soldering. Um, it's a shame because I was very fond of this uh, little PCB, but it's it's not going to be used like that in the final version. So we'll see. But that said, as a test rig, it would actually work perfectly, especially if you have a little uh, um, monitor here. There's room enough. Uh, it fits the one I have, but unfortunately, the the uh, um, the composite doesn't quite work for DC64. So I have another screen coming and I'm going to use that as a test rig, maybe make a, a little box. But for what I have in mind, this isn't quite going to do, although I'm glad I have, I can hack this out and uh, have a little uh, interface, board interface made. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, let's uh, let's get back to the shed, uh, finish that build and... Whew. Oh my God, it's done. So before I show you the front, um, before I show you the front, uh, here is the back. So I have the monitor here. I have the uh, the board just sitting there. C64 is right over there. And this is the uh, sort of synth cart assembly. Uh, so what we have is the synth cart here with an interface board to allow for a second board to be plugged in with that MIDI out. It's a bit bulky. Uh, there's a, a cleaner and tidier option available. No, it's not the, uh, it's not the, um, the uh, Messiah board, it's another one yet uh, that I have on order, but the guy has to make them one at a time and it's, uh, it's, it takes a while. So when it arrives, it looks tidier. I might make a separate uh, a separate post for it. Uh, I hacked this uh, 
PC power supply to provide 12 volt to here and 5 volt to the uh, the Arduino uh, board. And what I've done, I've actually used, I'm glad I did it now. Uh, remember the way I said I put uh, extra holes and a uh, little SMD pad to allow for a different type of multiplexer to be used. Well, I'm glad I did that because I used that and I put pin connectors out of those, um, the equivalent uh, matching pins here that run directly to all my parts here. Um, and and that worked. So I don't need USB power here. Uh, it's all power to this guy. Uh, and uh, let me let let me flip this around. Here we go, folks. This is uh, but this is it in a way. I'll explain in a second. Um, so uh, we have our, our screen here. I actually uh, managed to reuse the uh, bezel from the, uh, the original screen uh, to uh, to sort of hide and disguise things a little bit. Um, with our pods, with uh, just everything, with MIDI in, MIDI out. Uh, I have an on, off switch here, just uh, an audio out, volume pot here, and uh, just various stuff. Our uh, C64 is just sitting nicely here. It's working. <laughs> And uh, our power is on the side with just a little opening here. We've uh, some lovely, lovely wood grain and tea molding. Uh, so it's all nice and, and, and done in a way. <laughs> Let me explain. So a week has passed since the previous footage that you saw. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'd have seen this thing working as I was uh, messing with the pots and you could see the value changing in here. Something happened um, in my uh, attempts to just uh, better this little rig and uh, and do things. I think I broke something, either in the expander port or the um, uh, the uh, the MIDI port altogether. So right now I just have the synth card. Normally you plug this into your C64. You plug uh, this here or here and the synth card uh, right here bit bulky, bit cumbersome. There is, I have another card that is all in one coming. It's not the Messiah, although Messiah might be interesting for another project, but uh, it has the synth card on it as well. And it's, it's much more smaller form factor. So it'll work again, but for the sake of this video, and I want to get it finished and done, I cannot wait another two, three weeks or four weeks in this case, or maybe five for this thing to arrive. So uh, I just wanted to finish the video. This is uh, my little synthesizer. So it's more, it's essentially working. My only issue is um, I got it. I got it to be controlled by this guy that worked fine. Uh, I ended up having to, uh, not, uh, use the MIDI in, not in software for the Arduino, but I actually patched MIDI in right into MIDI out with a couple of uh, of um, of uh, diodes um, just to prevent the pad from just cross feeding into the, the, the two. So I've amended the schematics for that. That's the extent I'm going to go with this video. So once I receive the other card, it's all going to be back working and we'll have no issue. In fact, uh, all that space that this uses will be freed to put the power supply properly the way I designed it to be uh, put because right now it was on its side. So it was all a bit wobbly in there. And, um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm happy overall. Disappointed that I couldn't get this thing to, uh, to properly run for a demonstration and maybe I wanted to sequence. I had some stuff uh, in the sequence ready to go and uh, today I just wanted to finish this video and get it filmed and it's just dying on me and I'm so disappointed. Anyway, folks, a bit of an anticlimax, but you will see this uh, little synth in the video at some point. I will use it uh, for, for one of those uh, synthesizer uh, covers. I hope this was of some interest anyway. It was a cool project. Um, it's I'm 
just waiting for that cart to arrive and whenever it arrives it'll be uh, all working uh, anyway folks thank you for watching if you like this kind of stuff i have a second channel where i do a lot of uh, repair videos mostly arcade some console some uh, computer stuff um they're usually successful <laughs> and uh, and uh, i do all the stuff there as well if that's your kind of stuff uh, I, i'd appreciate the stuff there as well folks thank you for watching and uh, well see you for the next cover Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm.